Today we're going to be going over cold sterile. This is your uh, room temperature sterilization and already we have some things in there but the first thing you want to do is put your gloves on and if you know there's nothing in there that will poke you, um, break the gloves, you don't need to use the utility gloves, you can use nitrile gloves uh, just for what we're going to be doing tonight, rinsing off the uh, cold sterile items which happen to be impression trays. So the first thing is you want your safety glasses and then you want your mask and your gloves, all of your PPE that is required for sterilization. And so we're going to take the lid off and inside of here we have all of our plastic items and we're going to lift this out and continue to hold it so it'll drain and then lean it. And then bring it over to the sink where you're going to thoroughly rinse off and inspect at the same time your impression trays and leave them there to dry. There are some items in here that contain metal, but if you put them in there, take them out, um, and they don't corrode like your spatulas, um, then you are fine. There are some things that you would never put into the cold sterile. It's specifically made just for plastic, 100% plastic, but I know in the orthodontic office um, that I work for, we would put spatulas and um, bite sticks in there. Some things you would never wanna put in there would be, of course, your high speed, because that is 100% metal, and the only plastic or rubber that would be on there is the gaskets. Your slow speed hand piece, your straight hand piece, that does not go in there. The spatula can go in there. This definitely, your instrument holder, so that when you're going over um, order of use, on the tray, you would have, take your instruments off, but this could go into the cold sterile. And then of course you would have your 100% plastic cheek retractors that would go in there. Okay, so we're gonna run through, um, for the cold sterile, it's 100% immersion. So if you think like Baptist, they get fully, baptized, they get fully immersed in the water, and that is what we're going for, to fully baptize these impression trays. Making sure you get all of the cabicide off of this. Um, the chemical that we use in the cold sterile is called cabicide three minute kill time. A lot of offices just let these air dry instead of drying them off with the paper towel because it's not like it's gonna rust because it's plastic. Now, if you come up on <clears throat> an impression tray that does still have alginate in it, you need to put it in the sink and go on to the next one. And when you get done with the good trays that are ready to be rinsed off and dried and put back in the drawer, then you're going to take the impression trays that still have alginate on it, and you're going to 
continue taking all of the alginate off of it so that it'll be properly sterilized. Because you want to make sure you can reach all of the plastic that will touch your patient's mouth. One of the biggest mistakes that assistants will make is cutting corners in sterilization. And that is one thing you cannot do is cut corners when it comes to asepsis. So I wanna go over a few things that have happened. Um, so we're going to get the water out. Don't just throw this back in because this'll splash out just like if you you know, fill a bathtub all the way up and then you get in, it's gonna overflow if you get in too fast. So we're just gonna place that in there and let it go down to the bottom all on its own. And then this is when I would go through and if there was alginate left in, I would finish cleaning it out and then put it back in here. So let's say that we're gonna do sterilization and all of these were in the sink. They're all dirty. And we've cleaned them all out. There's no alginate left in here. So we're gonna put them in the cold sterile. When you fully immerse, you are sterilizing. However, <clears throat> a lot of times, someone's not checking the sterilization and things get put in there and they get left a little bit too, too high up in there. So there's no way that this green tray is going to get sterilized because it's above the solution. So when you're doing cold sterile, you want to make sure everything fits below the cold sterile solution. Okay, and so then we're gonna put the lid on. And in most offices, um, they will take and have like a little um, post-it. And right on the post-it, um, if it's 10 o'clock in the morning at 10.05, take out the um, cold sterile. So that way, you know, everybody knows, okay, um, we're gonna go ahead and this is ready. We'll take it up and clean it like you just saw me do. However, if you see that sign on there and you throw something in there, you have to start all over again because everything in there has been contaminated. So we're gonna go over what we use here is Cavicide three minute kill time. And so a lot of times when you go into an office, if you've never worked in that office or you've worked in a office and now you're going into a new office, you want to know what solutions are being put in there. If you don't know, um, just by looking at the name, if you don't know the product and how long it needs to stay under there, then um, turn it over and read the instructions. That is so important that if you don't know the particular solution that you read and make sure you, that you know. And you should be going through OSHA training and not just by video, but actually having someone give you a tour and say, hey, this is Cavicide, we use it for cold sterile. Um, it kills everything in three minutes. Um, and then this is what happens if it gets in your eyes. You go to your safety data sheets. So this is what we use for our dental clinic. Um, I want to read out of the textbook um, when we're talking about liquid chemical disinfectant sterilization um, that 
This is the primary reason for using cold sterilization. Some of the items used in the dental office cannot endure heat sterilization and must be placed in a cold sterilization. So, um, we have our cold sterile, we have our ultrasonic, we have our autoclave, um, and then there are special cleaning devices for your high speed, your slow speed, any type of hand pieces. And that is a separate um, training for you in that office. So um, making sure that you have your PPE on and um, that you're following the instructions. And then the greatest thing is, when do we change this? So when you look on here, it'll say, um, every 28 days, you need to change the solution. So in a lot of offices, you will see a calendar and you'll count out 28 days. And then on there you say change cold sterile solution. But the rule of thumb for us in our office was if for some reason the cold sterile um, starts to get murky and you know there's um, a lot of extra saliva and things, we would just go ahead and dump it and fill it up with the new solution. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, how to change it out. All right, so I'm gonna turn the sink faucet and just kind of leave it running a little bit. Make sure I have this plug in here. And so we're going to take everything out. So that I can show you how to dump this. Now, I will show you what this looks like inside of it. And so there is an item left in there. So we're going to take that out. And then very carefully, we're going to tilt it on the corner. And then and then wipe it out. So that if there is any type of film in here, you've gotten it out. And then we want to rinse it one more time. And typically we do this on a non-patient day. And then I'm going to turn it right there. And then I'll start rinsing these off again because they are clean and disinfected. And once they're dry, you're ready to put them back in the cabinet for use.